I recently got a request from a client to build an air cannon. It's really terrible to get paid to do these things, but it's actually a lot of hard work to make something that just works over and over again for many years without any errors. There will always be errors, but you have to minimize them as much as possible or else it won't be a successful installment for the client. So to shoot this ball, I need compressed air and I also need to open and close a hatch to hold the air pressure. I had a hard time finding a good introductory video on how to get started with pneumatics, so I thought I'd pass on some of the things I've learned while working on this project. There's basically three things you need. You need a compressor that makes you the air. You need some fittings and uh, tubing that will transfer the air from uh, the compressor to what will eventually be what you're using to do the job. And that can be valves and cylinders of different kinds. Compressors come in different sizes and the size of the compressor will generally reflect the pressure you can produce with it. Smaller compressors like uh, this one, which is an airbrush compressor, it can deliver about four bars of pressure. Bars is uh, the standard measurement of uh, atmospheric pressure. So one bar is the pressure that you have around you just now. This translates to a pressure of 0 0.1 megapascal and then you have the American unit of PSI. So one bar, 0 0.1 megapascal equals 14.5 PSI or pounds per square inch. PSI is also what you will usually find uh, on the compressors along with uh, bars. So a small compressor can typically give you four bars. It has this uh, basic setup. It has a gauge here. Here it has a regulator that regulates how much the maximum pressure is. It has a switch which will turn on and off an electric pump that will compress the air and it will squeeze that air out through a filter which will take out the water that happens from condensation while we're compressing the air. Like I said, this is a small compressor and it can only run continuously. It, it, this means it has to be on all the time because it has nowhere to store the pressure. It only has the pressure that it can produce at the time. This is calculated as CFM, the flow of air, cubic feet per minute. Different compressors will have different ratings of how much air they can deliver. What is much more useful though for working with pneumatics is having a compressor that has a tank which can store a lot of pressurized air. So the type of compressor you need dictates if you need a tank and for pneumatics you do want to have a tank. Uh, typical tools that you'll run is uh, an air duster, a paint spray gun, a cleaning gun, tire inflator and if you have a lot of pressure so you have a larger compressor that can deliver eight bars You'll also use uh, power tools like uh, wrenches and cutters and all sorts of things. There is, however, no disadvantage to having a tank, so you might as well just get one that has at least a small tank, depending on your needs. So now that you've found a compressor that uh, suits you, you'll measure how much do I need of continuous air delivery, how much do I need of uh, delivery of air every now and then, uh, that will decide the size of the compressor you'll buy. Well, if you don't know what to buy, just buy a cheap one initially and you'll usually uh, get far with that. And when you, have, when you have one, you'll know what you want. In my case, I purchased this small one first because I thought that was what I needed and it was cheap. When I realized this was not a good purchase, I need something that has an air tank. I picked up this one from a friend uh, and it will do for now. For my installation, they will have compressed air installed at the premises. When you want to take the air out of the air tank on the compressor, you need to have some kind of hose. These hoses come with different kinds of connectors. This connector is a quick connect. It will easily connect if you just push it in and you pull back to release it. It pops out. If you have pressurized air, it will actually shoot out. So it's a great connector. But there are some difficulties with them. They are not standard. That is, this one is standard for Europe. Then there's the Hansen standard, the Hansen 1000, 2000 and 3000. And then there's the Swedish standard and then there's the Finnish standard and then there's the automotive standard and th there's so many standards. 
just make sure that you just purchase one type of these. Typically, you'd use the one that comes with your compressor and the host that comes with the compressor, unless you have a specific need. One such specific need would be if you are setting up compressed air in your uh, workshop to use automotive tools like power wrenches and, and ratchets and that kind of stuff. Uh, for that case, you do want to use the automotive connectors because that will be what's on your tools. Next up, we need to get the air from this quick connect and into our pressurized air system. We connect pressurized air through different kinds of tubes. We have four millimeter, six millimeter, eight millimeter, and so upwards different kinds of tubes. You have these like textile based tubes or they, they have a textile woven on, onto them. You have these plastic tubes that have a, a net of textile woven into the tube. And then you have these polyurethane uh, tubes that I use. Uh, very simple, very easy, and they can hold a lot of pressure. There's also silicone tubes, but they cannot hold as much pressure. Uh, they will eventually work like a balloon if you apply too much pressure. So it's better just to use high pressure uh, tubing. What you'll see is that uh, when you want to connect this, we use these super nice small quick connects. A quick connect allows you to push uh, tubing into and then it's completely airtight. It, it has a very simple locking system. You just pull back and then you can pull it out, but you will never do that during normal circumstances. So the tube will be really, really well stuck. You'll also see that uh, these two connectors or uh, push fit connectors have different orifice on both sides, actually. On one side, they're made to fit with a certain diameter of hose. On the other end, they're made to fit a set of threads. There's many kinds of threads and in pressurized air, empirical is quite common. You'll have half inch, quarter inch and one eighth inch. This is a connector that will take the quick connect and convert it into a quarter inch and then reduce it to an eighth inch. And that will connect to my flexible textile tubing here. I also have this connector, which I can just swap out. It will take the output from the compressor and reduce it to a six millimeter tubing, which is perfect for my needs at the moment. You'll find lots of different connectors in the store. So just figure out how you want to connect things, what standards you want to base things on. Make sure you have the same threads on your quick connects as you have on the next thing we're looking into, and that's the valves and cylinders. So a valve is very simple. It has an input and it has an output and by default it is closed. And when you apply power to it, that is usually 12 or 24 volts, it will open and let the air through. When you turn the power off, it will hold the air back in. You basically just add a tube here and then another tube here. Uh, one of them will be pressurized with air and when we turn it on, you'll hear that air goes out really quickly. So this is great when you just need to have air turn on and off. And this is exactly what I need for my air cannon project. Uh, but I also have another thing that I need. So when you're blowing something through a tube, if there is a hole, the air will escape there. So I need to close the tube after inserting the bowl. And for that, I need something that can close the tube. And for that, I will use a cylinder. Cylinders come in two kinds. You have the single acting ones that have a spring that when you release it, it pulls back. Then you have these, the double acting ones. They will extend and compress, but they will not do anything by itself. So to control a single acting valve, you'll use one of these. So it's a valve that can turn on and off the airflow. As you can see, it has three inputs. The one here marked with a P in my case is the pneumatic connector or the input. This is where we attach the airflow. Then out through the A, it's not always A, it's often an A, uh, you have the output. And then you have the R, which can be called other things as well. So 
the R is the exhaust. So when you pressurize something and you turn it off, you need the air to go back somewhere. And in this case, it goes back through the exhaust port. Ever so often when you work with pneumatics, you'll hear these leakages. You'll hear air flowing out somewhere. It'll be like a hissing sound and you can usually feel it with your finger. If you're having a hard time finding it, you can always lick your finger and then where you feel it's getting cold, finger is being hit by air flowing out. The way, there's several ways of solving this. One is obviously just tightening things up, just using a wrench and, and getting it airtight. Another one is applying what is usually referred to as a plumber's tape. It's uh, also called thread seal tape. The official name is PTFE tape. It's a super thin piece of plastic tape that you apply directly to the threads on uh, the connection and then you just keep them tight and screw them in and that will make a completely airtight connection. This one has M5 connectors so I'll add one here to the exhaust or to the, to the pressurized port and then I'll take another one and add to the output and then I'll take a third and add to the exhaust. So this is a muffler they call it. It just well reduces the noise from the air flowing out. So when I apply pressurized air then I can press this button here to test it. As you can see when I release it the spring inside the single acting cylinder will pull the cylinder back. Next up we have a 5 to 2 way valve. These ones are made to work with the double acting cylinders. So you have one input where you apply the air from the compressor. You have two exhaust ports and two outputs. So this thing will toggle between A and B when you apply power or press the test button. This one I've connected and here you can see I have a input. I have these mufflers that also have a screw and using these screws I can decide how much air goes out and in uh, when I want to. This can be used to adjust the speed. Let's just keep them open for now. And the outputs they will go to each of the ends of the cylinder. So when I press the button it will compress and extend. Compress and extend. And this is really quickly. Let's try to uh, make it slower when it goes in. Turn this one. And then we try it out. Press, slowly in, quick out. Slowly in, quick out. So I can make both ways go slowly. And I can change it up so it's quickly going in and then slowly going out. So these are the basics. Uh, there's many places you can get hold of compressed air parts. I suggest that if you're making something permanent that you buy it from somebody that will uh, be able to deliver you spare parts when you need them. For just testing you can get these off eBay, uh, these uh, components from AirTag are great for just testing out. Uh, you can buy small kits with all you need from them. Best of luck and have fun!